Hello, I want to introduce uh, Paul Spencer from Firefleet Maintenance, uh, who's going to come and talk to us about uh, uh, fire engine being a fire engine mechanic and the pathways to becoming a mechanic. Um, without further ado, thanks. Thank you, Paul, for joining us. Mickey, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I'm really excited. Uh, this is fantastic. Um, looking forward to talking to people about what I do and also about uh, just being technicians as a whole. Um, I think that San Juan County, um, well, this, this talk could certainly um, develop the economic outcome of a certain number of individuals, uh, but also I think the whole community uh, can benefit from having good technicians available uh, to maintain their equipment, whatever it is, their cars, their trucks, their tractors, their bulldozers, whatever it is. And so today's talk is kind of about that. Now, uh, I'm in a very niche uh, aspect uh, in that I'm a very specific uh, mechanic. I work on emergency vehicles, right? But really the talk is about uh, technicians as a whole, uh, younger folks who are entering into uh, the industry uh, to become uh, something, a technician. So you may have seen my vehicle, uh, which is a pretty funny looking vehicle, uh, at the ferry landing, or maybe you saw it at San Juan EMS, or you could have easily seen it at Orcas Fire, or Shaw Fire, believe it or not, uh, or a long time ago, maybe at Lopez Fire. But uh, so I'm very specific to uh, working on uh, emergency vehicles. Uh, so very specifically, um, <clears throat> a mechanic of those vehicles. Um, the talk I'd like to give today, though, is uh, fueled on what is the difference between a mechanic, a fire engine mechanic, and a emergency vehicle technician. So uh, if you weren't in the industry, you wouldn't really know the difference. And so my talk is about uh, young people becoming not mechanics, but technicians. And so uh, I'd like to show the pipeline on how to become a technician. Uh, and then uh, I'll give some uh, demonstrations of what it is that I do and show how our industry has hugely changed from just a number of years ago uh, as it relates to uh, the technology that are on vehicles. And uh, also, uh, if you have questions about stuff I've kind of left out or anything like that, I'd love to be able to answer those questions. But I'd like to uh, kind of say, you may have seen my truck, but you've never actually seen my truck working for the most part. Uh, I work in a number of different areas uh, I actually work for the Forest Service. So when our world catches on fire, that's not a cloud, that's actually a fire. Uh, the Forest Service calls me to go out and maintain all of the vehicles uh, that are on that fire. If they break down, I'm the person that has to fix them. And so sometimes those vehicles are happen to be uh, dozers and things like that. But my truck is a service truck. So in a shop, uh, the mechanic has a toolbox. Well, my toolbox has axles, tires, and a steering wheel, and I drive my toolbox where it's needed. Uh, but really, the, the bulk of my work is working on big red trucks, fire engines. I work through uh, certainly San Juan County, uh, but also Skagit Island and King County. And technically right now, I'm coming to you from one of the fire departments I work for, which is Woodenville Fire. So that is what I do. Now, please keep in context. If you're watching this video and you go, I don't care about fire engines, I really love excavators or bulldozers or whatever it is. The uh, information I'm saying easily is transferable right to that. A service truck is a service truck. It's the training of the person who's driving that service truck that leads towards what machines you're actually working on. So our local Caterpillar dealer or whatever it is, all need technicians that are highly trained. Okay, leads us to this question, mechanic or technician? Now, what is the definition of a mechanic? Uh, in the United States, a mechanic is a person who has tools who fixes something. Fine, okay. What is the definition of a technician? A technician actually has the training uh, and the experience and the testing in a certain area of expertise to where they can have basically a professional recognition uh, for a position. So I am an emergency vehicle technician. It means I have been tested. 
I have the experience and I know a certain area of information related to emergency vehicles. Uh, for me, it actually translates out to um, 22 exams, 21 exams, something like that, and close to 2,000 uh, test questions that I have passed uh, in order to be able to get that certification. So uh, anyone can hang out a shingle that says I'm a mechanic. However, uh, a technician, like you see the blue star, ASE blue star, that's at an auto shop or at a truck shop or something like that means that those technicians are trained and certified. So, okay. Before I lose you, before you just kind of go whatever, whatever, let me explain today, right now. Uh, a mechanic on San Juan Island, I talked to one of the larger shops on San Juan Island or wherever, uh, the starting pay for a mechanic is about $20 an hour. So the, the starting pay for a mechanic, uh, almost anywhere you go. I've spoken to a lot of shops on the mainland. Uh, I've spoken to shops in San Juan County. I know in fire departments, uh, the starting pay for a mechanic is about 20 some odd dollars an hour. The starting pay for a certified emergency vehicle technician is 50, $50 an hour. This is a 25 year old person with maybe two years of training and <clears throat> has passed a whole bunch of tests that say, yeah, I, I really am a certified, professionally certified uh, technician. So starting pay $50 an hour for a 25 year old individual. Now that's for a fire engine mechanic, fire engine emergency vehicle technician. Uh, in our regular world, in, a, in an industry that doesn't require professionally certified technicians, the starting pay for that person is about $40 an hour, a little over $40 an hour. So we're talking about an entry level person into the field, uh, working on dozers, working on fire engines, working on cars or trucks, uh, the starting pay difference is huge, absolutely huge. So uh, we're looking at 100,000 a year or 80,000 a year um, for starting pay for a person who has a little bit of schooling, uh, a little bit of testing, a little bit of experience. And I think that's really important. Now, honestly, um, our county needs that. Every auto shop in, in the United States needs currently trained technicians to be able to work on these very modern vehicles. When you go to a Ford dealership, we're not really supposed to let anybody know, but there is only maybe one or two technicians that are truly up to speed in the electronic systems on many of our vehicles. Uh, so even the dealerships are struggling hard to get people who are trained adequately uh, to maintain our vehicles. Um, it's very hard for auto shops to have well-trained, uh, well-trained people. Okay. So, uh, I would like to explain how, uh, uh, you're young, you're thinking of becoming a technician. You're thinking of going into the field of fixing something, uh, whatever it is. Uh, let me show you a pipeline, how to do this quickly, efficiently. Uh, and cause it's really super easy. Uh, when I started, years ago, I have lots of gray hair, uh, it wasn't built, the pipeline wasn't built. But today, the pipeline is built. But let me just explain, because I'm a fire engine mechanic, uh, that I am in a different field. Because the reason why the dollar per hour is $10 more in my industry is because there's a law. This is the Washington State Legislature. These are the laws of Washington State. And it says right in here that if you have a fire engine, then it is going to be maintained by a certified emergency vehicle technician. So all the other industries, except for airlines, airplanes and helicopters, do not have law that requires training. Uh, in, in the United States, you literally, anyone can work on a vehicle. That's not the case in, in Canada. You actually have to be licensed. So here, anyone can work on a vehicle. So in my industry, it is that law uh, falls back on our uh, fire service standards. So there's a professional qualification standard uh, for the work that I do. It's just, it's like a fire code. Uh, NFPA 1071 just simply says what my training and certification will be. And um, 
if you look. Uh, to become a certified fire apparatus technician or ambulance technician, uh, it just shows the pipeline, the, the number of exams you have to pass. So if we look at them very specifically, on the left-hand side, uh, fire apparatus technician, uh, ASE, Automotive Service Excellence, is just normal exams that you would take if you were in any normal uh, class program, uh, college program, technology program, or if you were just a person on the street that really wanted to be, get certified. Uh, these are the exams. So uh, for an EVT, we have to be certified in truck brakes, truck suspension, steering, uh, inspection, maintenance, and testing. Now, th those are EVT exams, emergency vehicle technician exams. There is a special certifying body uh, for big red trucks. And so uh, these are all the exams uh, that have to be passed. There is some crossover between fire uh, engines and ambulances. So it's, um, it, it's not a huge number of uh, exams. But let me explain. I, I did actually just hire someone. Uh, and he is uh, just over 25 years old, and um, he is making $50 an hour because he is a master EVT. And he went through the pipeline uh, that uh, perfectly prepared him uh, to, to just jump right into working on fire engines with me. So Bellingham Technical College, which is very close to San Juan County, uh, has a diesel technology program. It's a two-year associate's. Associates of Applied Science degree, and it is a uh, very uh, good program that gives, gives you a wide full spectrum of information on how to maintain um, trucks. So uh, anything with a diesel, um, diesel power. So uh, with a two-year degree there, you're well on your way uh, to shaping uh, your resume to get hired quickly and easily. So this two-year program uh, would uh, get you a job uh, in uh, a logging outfit that needs to work on logging trucks uh, at motor truck or valley freight liner, uh, probably, um, easily. Two-year program is kind of the jumping off point. Um, now, uh, they don't give you the ASE uh, exams, but they point you in the right direction. They prep you for taking these exams. Now, the ASE exams for trucks are about every component that you would find on a normal semi-truck. So this is the pipeline. This is how you do it. Uh, there is test prep uh, uh, packages that they have, pro, you know, printouts that you can read, uh, and it will show you the battery of questions that you will receive when uh, taking these, these exams. And uh, it's work, it's all there is to it, it's work. Uh, I studied incredibly hard uh, when I was starting out uh, to start taking these exams. I haven't stopped, and that was many, many years ago. I am studying harder now than I did back then with all the new technology that's coming out in an over-the-road truck. Uh, my latest emergency vehicles have over 45 computers on board. And I have to be able to get into those computers, understand those computers, and update those computers. So, uh, yeah, that's that's what I know. So, uh, where my fire training comes from, and as fire engine mechanics, emergency vehicle technicians, where our training comes from is an association, the Washington Washington Fire Chiefs Association. Uh, there is a division, fire mechanics division, and we put on a conference every year, sometimes two conferences. Uh, where it's a week long of classes on how to work on fire engines. So this is the standard pipeline that we would go through uh, for a emergency vehicle technician. So uh, you can kind of see that um, we are, our next conference is coming in September. Every year in September is when our conference is. So it's not complicated. Um, it's, it's just, that's the path to becoming a master EVT. So if you wanted to work on yellow machines with tracks uh, or uh, whatever it is, uh, it's the same pipeline. Instead of the Washington Fire Mechanics, you would go off to a, a school that may be specialized in Caterpillar uh, engines or something like that. Um, 
really being a technician is about being trained specifically for the tasks, being tested on those tasks, passing it, and getting certified. That makes a technician. That's what I know. So uh, it's, it's really the choice of the individual uh, to enter in as a mechanic or a technician. Uh, if you dedicate yourself for a number of years, two, three, four years, to training and experience, uh, you can start a fantastic career uh, that's paid uh, paid really well, eighty to a hundred thousand a year, um, starting pay. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of the intro. How are we doing, Mickey? What do you think? That's great. Um, I had a quick question, if you don't yeah. mind. Yeah. Um, and. Sadie, if you have uh, questions, you can unmute yourself to ask questions. Um, was um, how often do you have to retest like, to uh, maintain your certification? <laughs> ah, yes, there's a there is that exactly. So uh, uh, with 25 certifications, I have to recertify fairly much all the time. So five years, each certification will last five years. So everything does need to be re. Um, certified uh, and so I can get kind of grumpy about that because I first master certified in 2000 uh, the year our professional standard came out and so I have taken the same exam now maybe five times uh, which is uh, kind of frustrating for me it's a uh, I have to pay for it every time and it's time but the exams do change our technology changes and the exam changes so back when I first took breaks uh, there wasn't one bit of electricity uh, in the test. There, there was nothing. Uh, now we have ABS questions, ATC questions, automatic traction control questions. Uh, we have all sorts of uh, questions uh, about the braking system that we just didn't have back then. And another question was, uh, well, I guess a couple other questions. One was, like, are they practical tests or like hands-on tests where you're doing something or is it all like uh, written uh, yeah, test. yeah. ACT or the college entrance exam folks uh, administer the same uh, tests for us, ASE tests. So it's all, um, it's none of it's practical and it is all done um, multiple choice questions. Uh, the, you have to demonstrate experience. That's the one um, uh, minor challenge. You have to demonstrate experience in order to get the master certification. And so uh, the nice thing about Bellingham Technical College is while you're in the college, they're also giving you practical experience. So as you exit their program, you also have that practical experience uh, as it is uh, in, in intrinsic in their program. So you get that hands-on practical experience. Uh, as I was building it back in the late 90s for myself, I started uh, wrenching on fire engines in 1994. Um, there was no pipeline, there was no program. Um, so uh, I kind of learned while doing uh, and taking every training I could possibly find and uh, learning as I, I went along. Uh, but uh, nowadays, that's a, a very rocky path. You can't, uh, my, my fire engines are three quarters of a million dollars. So you can't tinker around on a three quarter of a million dollar fire engine. Uh, you gotta know what you're doing. Yeah. Um, another question would be like, how, how competitive is it to get into um, one of these training technical programs at the college level or the, the uh, technical yeah. colleges? And how would, how would somebody who is interested in going down that route prepare for that? Yeah, yeah, really good question. So um, getting into uh, the Bellingham Technical College uh, it is not uh, incredibly difficult. Uh, I believe that uh, it is a very inclusive, so it's not expensive, number one. That's huge. Uh, the, uh, I don't think you could commute from, say, Friday Harbor very easily. Uh, so you do have to figure out how to get residency over there in Bellingham in order to be able to attend a two-year college. Uh, but as far as uh, getting into the program, uh, I have great confidence that anybody who's really interested in it would be able to get access to it. Now, that's just one of the schools. 
there uh, is a, another school in say Skagit County. Uh, there's one down uh, closer to Seattle. Uh, but uh, the thing I know though about the Bellingham program is that the person I just hired who was fantastic, exactly the person I needed, um, uh, says that it, the program uh, completely set them up for success. So it had a lot of good things to say about the program. And I, I'm not sure that I, I can find a person that would say the same thing about the other programs. Uh, around. If you wanted to work on uh, dozers and excavators, uh, you would probably go to a different school. Um, and I can get into that for someone who's interested in that and just track me down in the ferry line and I'll tell you all about it. Sounds good. One other quick question was, so, so how much are you, how much does the Reese continual training and recertification cost you on how much is what would would be paid for by the employer and how much is just um right yeah so uh an employer should pick up the cost of the exams um it, when you're in the the two-year program uh, I believe that it, that is not included. So you would actually have to fork out the $65 for the test or whatever it is. Um, it's like 45 or 65. I'm not sure what it is uh, currently for each of the exams. Uh, so that would be a cost that the student would have to incur. Uh, but once they're hired on, uh, I believe that uh, almost all employers will absorb that uh, expense. Um, the uh, certainly in the fire service, uh, since it's a mandatory requirement of being uh, an emergency vehicle technician for the fire department, uh, you would uh, be paid. You'd be compensated hourly um, for your attendance to those exams, and I believe the the cost of the exam would be also absorbed by the fire department. And um, the training, the classes too. Uh, the training classes too, yeah. So any employee of a fire department who is required uh, will be sent to the um, annual conferences and that week all expenses uh, plus you'll receive your wages uh, for that training. So it's always absorbed by the fire department, by the employer.